chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again now we shall study the congruency of triangles what is congruency two triangles are said to be congruent if they overlap each other entirely that is if they are equal in all respects their respective sides are equal these three sides are equal then this angle is equal to this angle this angle is equal to this angle and third angle is also equal to the third angle then these two triangles will overlap that is when i place this triangle over this triangle the triangle below will be completely hidden and if i place this triangle over this then again the below triangle will be completely hidden so congruent figures are those figures which are equal in all respects we shall now spend some time in studying the geometry of congruency there are certain criteria which help us determine and prove that two triangles are congruent or not we do not have to each time prove each side and each angle equal there are certain shortcut criteria from which we can prove only three things to be equal the remaining will automatically be proved equal so these are shortcut criteria which i have shown here and which i will be discussing in the coming days questions on this topic may not be directly asked but this topic will surely help you develop reasoning skills and logic so i will take proofs of all the things because if you have a solid foundation in mathematics then a natural confidence develops an indirect question for example could be that you are given two triangles in which he says this angle is 60 and he says this is also 60 this is 5 this is 10 this is 8 this is 5 this is 8 then he might say what is the dimension of this side so questions of this type although not this simple they will be there in the exam their difficulty level can be higher also so i will try to cover each and everything let us proceed to our conceptual part first the first part is sas axiom for congruency an axiom we already know is a fact that cannot be proved its proof has to be assumed its success or its truth will have to be assumed just like god is an axiom similarly in mathematics there are a number of axioms and one of the axioms which we use for congruency is that two triangles are congruent if two sides and the included angle of two triangles are equal that is to say let me draw a diagram here this is one triangle and this is the second triangle he says it is sufficient if two triangles will be congruent if two sides this side for example and this side and this side and this side and the included angle if we can prove only these three things as respectively equal then we can safely assume that both the triangles are congruent so if this is 5 this is 5 this is let us say 30 degrees this is also 30 degrees and this is 6 this is 6 then we can safely assume on the basis of this axiom side angle and side side angle and side the angle has to be the included angle not any other angle the angle included between the two sides 
if these three things are respectively equal then we do not have to prove the other side or the other angles being equal so it is a good shortcut method we can simply see two triangles and if we can prove that the respective sides and the respective angles and the third respective side if they are all equal then the two triangles will be considered congruent we do not have to proceed any further in that matter we can simply prove state that the two triangles are congruent this is called sas axiom nobody can prove it it is just an observation that we have to take it for granted for example if i draw simply these figures like this this is 5 this is 30 degrees and this is 6 and i draw another figure 6 5 30 degrees then in the two figures because this is now fixed at 5 this is fixed at 6 fixed at 5 fixed at 6 then we can obviously through common sense also see that the third side in this case will be equal in length and since all the sides are respectively therefore equal the two triangles will be congruent and one of the angles is equal then because of the basic fundamentals we can say basic observation so this is just an axiom which we can however see as i have shown you that if we draw two segments like this then the third segment will obviously be equal it is just an observation we cannot prove it we have to assume its existence its truth therefore this is called sas axiom now let us take a question based on that axiom this will help us develop logic and reasoning skills he says ab is a line segment let me draw that line segment first this is a and this is b this is a line segment with a and b as its terminations and a line l is its perpendicular bisector perpendicular bisector means that we take a point on it which divides this line into two equal parts and then draw a line perpendicular to ab this line l will be called the perpendicular bisector this is 90 degrees and it is bisecting the line into two equal parts we can say two roads are like crossing each other or two sticks have been placed perpendicular to each other if a point p lies on the line l we can take this point p anywhere so this is p if a point p lies on the line l show that p is equidistant from ab that is from a the distance of this p from a is equal to its distance from the point b the meaning of this question is this so we have a perpendicular bisector and on it we have taken a point p we have to prove that the distance of p from a will be equal to the distance of p from b on the face of it this might look difficult but let us see from the perspective of congruency and let me mark this point as x now it is all about observation let us observe this triangle this triangle and this triangle we have two triangles i will write the steps so for your clarity in triangle pax and triangle pbx we have two triangles we'll make some observations this angle is 90 degrees angle pxa is equal to angle pxb is equal to 90 degrees this is given to us so we can write the reason that it is given to us these questions are always interesting because they involve reasoning now we have one angle one angle they are both 90 degrees then we have ax is also equal to xb 
and it is also given to us because x is the midpoint of a b therefore ax will have to be xb and another interesting thing is that px is common to both the triangles therefore this edge of both the triangles is equal px is equal to px it is also common for both the triangles so now we can observe that sas criterion is fulfilled it says one side this included angle 90 degrees and other side this they are respectively equal for both the triangles therefore triangle pax is congruent to triangle pbx this sign is called the sign of congruency it is two bars and a tilt like this they are two congruent triangles so pax has been proven congruent to triangle pbx solely on the based of basis of reasoning and on the support of this sas axiom now if these two triangles are congruent then their respective sides have to be equal even though we could see that this side is common this side is equal but because of the criterion we can safely assume that the third third side they will also have to be equal which implies third pair of sides is also equal so pa is equal to pb which we wanted to prove and it is proved i am taking all these from the basic level so that more importantly you get introduced to geometry and to develop the skills of reasoning we have seen how we have systematically built our case we started we just first made our observations then we put them on a piece of paper in triangle pax then we wrote three equalities our i was on sas and then we reasoned out then we built our logic then we brought in the sas criterion because things were available to us and then we made them congruent and then reasoned out that the third pair has to be equal and therefore p will always be equidistant from ab this is factually proved now a s a theorem for congruency of two triangles now this is a theorem a theorem is any fact that can be proved on the basis of other theorems or axioms a theorem is a provable fact but axiom is an assumed fact so this is one step that we have now taken that our basis is only as i have just now written side angle side is our axiom now on the basis of this axiom we have just now proved that this is equidistant in the previous question now we will take a bigger step and prove a s a theorem for congruency of two triangles he says two triangles are congruent if two angles and the included side of one are equal to those of the other let me first of all draw a diagram for you so that you understand what i mean by this two triangles are congruent if two angles and the included side for example suppose this and this pair are equal and this and this pair are equal and this side so this side is equal to this side this angle is equal to this angle and this angle is equal to this angle 
एंगल साइड एंगल एंगल साइड एंगल ही सेज इफ एंगल साइड एंगल एंड एंगल साइड एंगल आर इक्वल देन प्रूव दैट द टू ट्राइंगल्स विल बी कॉन्ग्रुएंट ऑब्वियसली we will have to build our case in such a way so that we make use of this basic fact to prove this thing this is going to be very interesting so let me show you how i am going to proceed this is given equal to this one thing this angle is given equal to this these two will be congruent if i am somehow able to prove that this and this are equal because if this is equal to this then this is already given equal and this is already given equal by sas axiom i will be able to definitely prove that these two are congruent so i have to now think about attacking this side it's really going to be very exciting so what i do is i will assume that they are not equal if they are not equal then i will reach some contradiction and that contradiction will tell that they have to be equal and by that i will be equal able to prove that this side will be equal to this side on the basis of contradiction let us see i am erasing the board and drawing the diagrams again neatly so that i can show them bigger because only diagrammatically we can easily prove our facts see this angle is already given equal to this angle and this side is already given equal to this side and this angle is given equal to this angle now i have to take about i have to concentrate on this edge and on this edge suppose suppose the edge on left side the edge of left triangle triangle is longer let me draw their borders or uh, their corners also so that i can easily refer to them suppose that the edge of left triangle is longer so this means let us suppose that ab is greater than de if ab is greater than de then cut ab at a dash so that a dash b becomes equal to de so this is a dash what i'm speaking in common man's language is that you take a point a dash here such that this a dash b is same as de it is going to be possible because ab is longer and therefore i can take a shorter point on this so that this edge and this edge they become equal now let me join this to this and let this angle be marked as alpha we can give any name i am giving it alpha so this is a triangle a dash cb and this is our one triangle in this case of both the triangles we can see that this edge is equal to this edge this edge is equal to this edge this angle so again by the sas axiom this triangle should be congruent to this triangle we can write by sas triangle a dash bc will be congruent to triangle def so because they are congruent therefore the entire angle dfe should also be equal to angle alpha degrees this should be alpha and this should be alpha because if this is congruent to this triangle then this is alpha and this is alpha but here is a contradiction because alpha has already been given equal to this this 
This angle has already been given equal to the complete angle. Two angles are congruent if two angles and the included side are equal. So this entire angle has already been given equal to this outer angle which I can label up to as beta or I can instead of beta write alpha because this entire has been given equal to alpha. But if this is true then this smaller angle alpha will have to be also alpha. So this angle alpha and this outer angle alpha cannot be equal because by our eyes we can see that this is stretching outwards so the outer angle cannot be equal to the inner angle. Therefore a contradiction has arrived and because of this contradiction our original assumption must be wrong. So AB cannot be more than DE. So one thing we have built is that AB cannot be more than DE because if it is more than DE then this contradiction a weird situation arises where the outer angle has to be forced to be equal to the inner angle which won't be possible. So AB is not more than DE therefore either AB is equal to DE or AB is less than DE. Again the reasoning is required. Now AB less than DE means DE is longer. Uh, D, huh. This means DE is longer. We can reverse the logic similarly cut it here and on the basis of the same story we can prove that even this is not possible. Therefore the only possibility is this. And if AB is equal to DE then we can obviously see that by the side angle side side angle side these two triangles will have to be congruent. And hence this stands proved. I am not writing formal notes because this is not for class 10th exam. We are obviously preparing for a competitive exam which is not subjective. So I have laid stress on explaining the concept. But if you want the steps then you can obviously refer certain textbooks. The same solution is given there also. But because a video has a power of explaining the things live, this thing is missing there. But if you understand this one then that one obviously the formal steps you can read from the textbook. So I repeat here. We, at, we were to prove these two triangles are congruent if two angles and included side are equal. We wrote down our facts and then we set our eye on proving the third side equal. For that we first of all assumed that AB is more than DE. Contradiction reached. Then we said this is not possible. Similarly we assumed the other way round that AB is less than DE again a contradiction would be reached. Therefore this is the only stable point and moreover two segments will either be equal or one will be less or third will be less other will be less. Therefore this has to be true and obviously if this is equal to this the other two are already given equal the two triangles will be congruent by the ASA theorem. This is how we have technically proved the whole thing. Let us now move to our next part. In this question he says ABCD is a quadrilateral in which AD is equal to BC. Let us first of all draw a quadrilateral of four sides. Any quadrilateral we are drawing A B, C and D in which AD is equal to BC. This has been given equal to BC so the opposite sides are equal. And angle DAB this angle is equal to angle CBA. So I will cut this also and tick this also double tick so that I can at least see it with a bit difference. So this angle is equal to this angle and this side is equal to this side. What is angle BAC if ABD is 30? What has been given as 30? 
A, B, D. Let us join this. This has been given as 30 degrees. And I have to find out B, A, C. So, I will join this one. So, I have to find out the measure of this angle. Obviously, this is a question of congruency and we have to just look it at from a special angle to look for congruent figures and then arrive at these angles. So, let me first of all take this triangle out separately so that I can clearly show what is the story. This triangle can be taken out separately. This I have ticked and this entire I have double ticked and this angle is 30 degrees. So, if I mark this as A, B and D. So, this part, this 30 and this one, this is ticked and this is entire there. Now, I will take up the other triangle out of this one. This I am drawing it like this. This is C, this is B, this is A. This is tick marked. I have taken from there so that I can see from these what is equal. And this entire double ticked. And this is X that I have to find out. Now, we will make observations about this triangle and this triangle. These I have just taken out of this entire figure separately for visibility. So, we can write in triangle ABD and ABC. We have AD is equal to BC which is already given to us and we have ticked them here so for visibility and then we have been given angle ABC is equal to angle BAD which is also given to us. This double tick and this double tick and then our out of the box observation that this AB is common to both the triangles. AB is part of this also and AB is part of this also. We can write AB is exactly equal to AB being common. So, we are slowly building our arguments. We have three things with us. Side. So, one side AD. Another angle and the other side. So, basically two sides and the included angle are equal. We can say by SAS axiom triangle ABD is congruent to triangle ABC. Therefore, other angles must be respectively equal. Here remember we cannot say whether this angle will be 30 or whether this will be 30. We can only say that the respective angles should be equal. So, how do we find out the respective angles? I hope you understand what I am trying to say. This is 30. Now, does it mean that x will be 30 or this will be 30? Let us now see a trick here. Whenever you are in doubt, take one side. The angle opposite to this side is x. And what is the angle opposite to this side? 30. These two angles should be equal because they will be the corresponding angles. So, x is equal to 30 degrees. And on the sidelines, AB has opposite to it this angle Y and AB has this angle Y. So, this Y will be equal to this Y. 
दिस इज थर्टी एंड थर्टी दी अदर पेयर इज ऑलरेडी गिवन इक्वल टू अस सो दिस इज हाउ द थिंग्स वुड वर्क द आंसर इन दिस केस इज थर्टी डिग्रीज In this question, in a right-angled triangle ABC, right-angled at C, we can draw a right-angled triangle. First of all, this is A, this is C, and this is B, and this has been given to us as 90 degrees. M is the midpoint of hypotenuse. M is the midpoint. so we can straight way mark our tick here c is joined to m joined to m and produce to point d such that dm is equal to cm produce it to a point d so this and this have been given equal to us point d is joined to point b if ab is 10 cm this is 10 then what is the length of this small cm this question can be easily solved by using circles but i am solving it by congruency solution by congruency this might be a bit long but it will help us understand the concepts of congruency although if we have to solve this question by circles then it is very easy which i have already done in the case of our lines and angles so let us now take it by congruency this will be a bit long let us start building our arguments have a look at this triangle and this triangle this side is equal to this side this side is equal to this side and the included angles are vertically opposite so we can say by sas by sas axiom side included angle side side included angle side by sas axiom triangle amc is congruent to triangle M B D. This is what we can easily see. I am not writing all those steps because I have already shown you by the help of this marker. If these two triangles are congruent, which implies third side that is A C should be equal to B D. the third side of this triangle is this and third side of this triangle they should be equal so we can mark three like this now let us now have a look at this bigger triangle and this triangle triangle again triangle abc in triangle abc we can see that this angle is exactly equal to uh, this side is exactly equal to this side ac again uh, uh, in triangle abc and triangle bcd we can see that ac is equal to bd just proved above this is one thing the second thing is that since this triangle is congruent to this triangle and if this is angle let us say alpha it is opposite to these two ticks then this angle opposite to two ticks will be also alpha because of congruency of this triangle and this triangle this alpha and this alpha now we can observe that if ab is a sort of transversal and this is one line and this is one line then alternate angles are equal so ac should be parallel to bd ac has to be 
parallel to BD because of alpha as explained. Now if AC is parallel to BD then have a look at BC as the transversal. This means DBC will also be same as this angle which is 90. The interior angles on the same side of transversal they add to 180. So if AC is parallel to BD so angle DBC will be equal to angle ACB is equal to 90 degrees. And there is another thing also BC is common BC is equal to BC common. So triangle ABC and triangle BCD they have one side this equal this side is already common and this angle has already been proved to be 90 degrees. So by SAS triangle ABC is also congruent to triangle BCD. So if this triangle is congruent to this triangle then their respective angles have to be equal. So let us observe the angle opposite to these three ticks. Let this angle be called beta. Then angle opposite to these three ticks will be this angle beta. So in this triangle this is beta, this is beta. And triangle BMC becomes isosceles which leads to triangle BMC as isosceles. This triangle has become isosceles triangle as we can see this is beta and this is also beta. Therefore CM has to be equal to MB. Therefore CM has to be equal to MB. CM has to be equal to MB. In isosceles triangle the base angles are equal so the sides are also equal. So CM has been proven equal to MB which is equal to and what is MB equal to half of AB because M is the midpoint of AB which is equal to half of AB. And what is AB given to us? AB is given to us as 10. So we will write half of 10 equal to 5 centimeter. So CM was required and its length has been proven equal to 5 centimeter. This is a typical question of the type of congruency in which we have used so many congruency things that although I have written a few words here only but most of it was explained. You should try to do this question again yourself and in case you falter come back to see the solution. I have already said the solution is by congruency. Other solutions much shorter are there. But the whole point is development of skills. So that is why I took up this one. We'll take up more of this in our next lectures. Thank you.